the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Unlike our usual mass, today we begin in the back of the church because we bless the crash and we place the baby Jesus into the crash. And uh, that's the beginning of our Christmas vigil mass. So, Father, we thank you for this crash scene that reminds us of your humility, the humility of Mary, Joseph, and the child. We ask, Lord, your blessing upon it as we lay your son in this crash. And we ask, Father, that out of your infinite goodness and out of your mercy, that you, O oh Father, will remind us of the humility that you call us to, and that we may have that grace and that love to live with you and to be for you a people humble and resilient. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And we ask the choir to continue now. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries and to call to mind the many ways that we have not lived as children of our God. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I have asked, as Mary of the Virgin, 
all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. O oh God, who gladden us year by year, as we wait in hope for our redemption, grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Let us be seated. Isaiah. 
About Zion, I will not be silent. About Jerusalem, I will not grow weary until her integrity shines out like the dawn and her salvation flames like a torch. The nations then will see your integrity, all the kings your glory, and you will be called by a new name, one which the mouth of the Lord will confer. You are to be a crown of splendor in the hand of the Lord, a princely diadem in the hand of your God. No longer are you to be named forsaken, nor your land abandoned. But you shall be called my delight, and your land the wedded. For the Lord takes delight in you, and your land will have its wedding. Like a young man marrying a virgin, so will the one who built you wed you. And as the bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so will your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. The response, I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. the source of their bliss. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. He will say to me, Reading from the Acts of the Apostles, taken from chapter 13. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia, he stood up in the synagogue, held up a hand for silence, and began to speak. Men of Israel and fearers of God, listen. The God of our nation, Israel, chose our ancestors and made our people great when they were living as foreigners in Egypt. Then by divine power, he led them out. Then he made David their king, of whom he approved in these words. I have selected David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will carry out my whole purpose, to keep his promise God has raised up for Israel, 
one of David's descendants, Jesus as Savior, whose coming was heralded by John. When he proclaimed a baptism of repentance for the whole people of Israel, before John ended his career, he said, I am not the one you imagine me to be. That one is coming after me, and I am not fit to undo his sandal. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. A genealogy of Jesus Christ, son of David, son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Judah and his brothers. And Judah was the father of Perez and Zereth, Tamar being their mother. Perez was the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Abimabad, Abimabad the father of Neshad, Neshad the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz, Rahab being his mother. Boaz was the father of Obed, Ruth being his mother. Obed was the father of Jesse, and Jesse was the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Solomon was the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam was the father of Abijah. Abijah was the father of Asa. Asa was the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was the father of Joram. Joram was the father of Azrael. Azrael was the father of Jotham. Jotham the father of Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah was the father of Manasseh. Manasseh was the father of Ammon. Ammon was the father of Josiah. And Josiah was the father of Jehoma and his brothers. And then the deportation to Babylon took place. And after the deportation to Babylon, Jesus was the father of Shetel. Shetel was the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was the father of Abiud. Abiud was the father of Elikim. Elikim was the father of Azor. Azor was the father of Zadok. Zadok was the father of Echem. Echem was the father of Eliud. Eliud was the father of Eliza. Eliza was the father of Matan. Matan was the father of Jacob. And Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, and who was born Jesus, who is called Christ. The sum of the generations, therefore, 14 from Abraham to David, and 14 from David to the Babylonian deportation, and 14 from the Babylonian deportation to Christ. This is how Christ Jesus came to be born. His mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they came to live together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a man of honor and wanting to spare her publicity, decided to divorce her informally. 
He had made up his mind to do this when the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because she has conceived what is in her by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you must name him Jesus because he is the one who is to save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill the words spoken through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. When Joseph spoke, woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord told him to do and took his wife to his home and though he had no intercourse with her, she gave birth to a son, and he named him Jesus, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. You know, nobody in their right mind would start a book with a set of names that are unpronounceable, eh? And the fact that they do that, the fact that St. Matthew starts his gospel this way, with all of these names from ancient past, means that he's making a, a point that he believes important for the life of the church. As we look at the genealogy, one of the things is, that is consistent is so-and-so is the father of this one. But then the genealogy breaks every now and again and, and adds in so-and-so being their mother. And Israel has always understood not only does it have patriarchs, it also has matriarchs. And the matriarchs inserted into the genealogy are very particular and I think very instructive. So as we, we look at the, the first one who is insert, inserted was Tamar being their mother because when Jacob when Jacob was having children he, did, he didn't favor Tamar but then a prophecy arose that this, the scepter will not pass from their, from their hand nor the mace from them until he who is to be born will be given birth and of the tribe of Judah. And, and Tamar brings that prophecy into fulfillment. And then as you go down, you see both Rahab, who was a prostitute, and she was in the city, in the new, in the promised land that was given. And she let her robes down to allow the people of Israel to come and enter into the city. And so she, open the way for the people into the promised land and, and became known that way. And then we have Rahab, who was not a Jew. She also was a Moabite. And she, because of her marriage bond, she said, wherever you go to her mother-in-law, wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you, your God will be my God. And my God will be your God too. And Rahab, opens up now salvation history, including not only Jews, but also Gentiles. And, and the next one that is included is a, the most famous or infamous of them all. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Bathsheba, we know the story only too well. And, and this is included here, it's not the sin of the woman, it's actually the sin of the men that is being highlighted. And in highlighting the sin of the men, what we are highlighting is that Jesus comes from a family line, and that family line is not perfect. And not only is the family line not perfect, then they're not willing to hide the skeletons in the closet. In fact, they're putting them out there for everybody to see because that's what families are, imperfect. Imperfect in so many different ways. And the last of the women to be included has her own little scandal going on, and that's Mary. Because if, if Joseph here 
had not decided to take Mary to his home as his wife, Mary could have been stoned to death. And as she, as she was stoned to death, then the whole of the salvation history would have come to an end. And so with all of these men that have been such a part of the genealogy, you, you have these women who are the mothers of faith and who remind us that as we celebrate Christmas, what we celebrate is family. That's the first thing we celebrate. And the second thing it reminds us is that no family is perfect. Jesus' family was not perfect. Y'all could accept that? I'm not hearing you. Can you accept that? Jesus' family was not perfect. You could live with that? So why are we trying to make out as if our families are perfect? Help me now. Help me. Somebody could help me with that? You know this old aunt, nobody don't want to talk about that one, eh? And this other character, we, we can't let anybody know that there's really our family. That's not how the Bible dealt with Jesus' family. It dealt with the family by including the good, the bad, yes, 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 and, and the ugly. It included it all. When we celebrate Christmas, we're celebrating the fact that God chose to be born into a family, a particular family. And that particular family had their own confusion going on. But, but that's what God chose. That's what God chose. And therefore, we should understand already that if God chooses to come to a family, then every family has to see itself as the birthing of God and the bringing forth of God into this world. And every family now has to see its sacred obligation in, in giving forth all that God wanted for the holy family. Every family now is called to that. As we listen to the, to the genealogy and to these women, the last of the women is Mary. The mother, the mother of God. That's how she's described by the tradition. And we also hear that Joseph was told, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. So she was also the mother of faith. In the time of Mary, if the husband denounced you for infidelity, you'd be stoned to death. That, that's, that was the law. And so when Mary said yes to the angel and said that let it be done to me according to thy word, Mary also said yes to have faith that God will somehow find a way to make this happen. Somehow God will make this happen. And that was an act of incredible faith. Let it be done to me according to thy word. Because when Mary says yes, Joseph, we see in our text, being a man of Torah, of the law, decides to divorce her informally. He could have chosen to divorce her publicly, denounce her for infidelity, and have her stoned to death. He doesn't. But Joseph now has his own his own visitation, his own annunciation. And Joseph now, from the angel, who says to him, do not be afraid to take Mary and the child for what she conceives is of the Holy Spirit. And, and here we see the origin of family of both the mother and the father having to say a yes, not to each other first, but a yes to God first. And through that yes to God, then something is born in that relationship that allows this relationship now to survive and to flourish. One of the dramas in the modern family that I see so often is that two people who love each other wildly and madly, they get married. And then the ego battle starts. 
you know, the toilet paper must roll from the top, not from the bottom. You can't squeeze the toothpaste from the middle. You have to squeeze it from the, bot from the bottom of the, of the tube. You, ha you have to do it this way. You have to do that way. And the ego battles. You, you all know what they're talking about? Eh? You're not sure what they're talking about? Eh? The challenge here is that each of these individuals are trying to be dominant in the relationship. And what we hear from the Holy Family is Mary had to say yes to God first. And Joseph had to say yes to God first. And in their saying yes to God, they bowed not to each other, but to God. And that allowed for a unity within the family. And it is that that Paul speaks about in Ephesians. When, when he asks married couples to bow first to God, in obedience to God, and then to each other, work out your practical arrangements. Because if both husband and wife are bowing to God, then what they're looking for is what God is asking, and it's no longer an ego battle. It now becomes a matter of discerning the will of God in the midst of this practical life that we are living. Mary and Joseph, men and women of faith, a man of faith, a woman of faith, gives us now a model of the family. And in this model of the family, who is born into this family is God's son himself, Jesus Christ. The name Jesus means God saves. God saves. By his very name, we know something of his, of his identity and of his mission. By his name, we know he is God. And by his name, we know his mission. He comes to save his people from their sins. God saves. God saves. Or as this text says, quoting Isaiah, Emmanuel. God is? God is? God is with us. God is with us. God is with us. There's something of a extreme humility around the Christmas crash, that, that God would be born this way, that Mary would have to have such great faith, that Joseph would have to bow his will to the will of God. Both Joseph and Mary are bowing to the will of God. And, and as I look around our world today, that's the one characteristic that we are in short supply of. As I listen to our own society, Everybody is head up on their rights and what they want and how I want this to happen. And everybody is big, big, big on me and I and, and what I this and I that and I the next. And that's why we are heading in a road that could only lead us to destruction. Only. Only. Because who is for this and who is for that? And then collision after collision. And you see how dirty it gets all over social media because we're so filled with ourselves that, 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 that we're, we're pro promoting that so deeply in our society. When God chooses to be born, he comes vulnerable, a little baby. There's nothing more vulnerable than a baby, nothing more helpless or needy than a baby. That's how God comes. We often think of God as this big power that is, that is going to do all of these bad things. That's not God. That's not God. God comes vulnerable, powerless, as a baby. We are, we are heading in a very wrong direction of civilization. And that wrong direction is causing great havoc in the family and in the society. Great havoc. Because rather than the humility that we see here, what we have is the hubris and the arrogance that, that each person believes that they have the full knowledge of everything and, and is willing to, to mash up everybody else if you can't get what you want. That has no future, you know. The only future that has is destruction of so much that we, we, we hold dear to our hearts today. 
including the very family that we hold dear to our hearts, including the love relationship that you got married because of. That's the only thing that that, that, that produces. Deep discontent and mashing up things that are precious. What God shows us is different. Deep humility, a willingness to be vulnerable, and a, a, a God who is not afraid of the messiness of the human family line. And therefore, not trying to be pristine in any form or fashion, but is saying, look, this is a family that I bring my son into, an imperfect family. And if God's family is imperfect, I ain't think that we have anything to try and boast about. Because our families are also so. And if, if Mary and Joseph will bow to the will of God, they say to us, what are we doing? Are we willing to bow to God? Or are we trying to bend God to us? What are we doing? And how are we living? Christmas is asking us in this 2021, our second Christmas living in COVID, Christmas is asking us a question that is most fundamental. Because the way we have been going will only lead us to more collisions and destructions. But if we take the Christmas message seriously, and if we're willing to go back to the humility that our grandparents knew and lived with, we could build a most incredible Trinidad and Tobago. We could build a land where we are willing to serve the other and put the other first before myself. A land where we mightn't have much, but the little we have, we're willing to cut a dumpling and four slices and everybody gets a piece. A land where we're not asking about me anymore, but we're asking about what is needed for the whole community and for the neighbor next door and for the other. And by being of service to the other, we will get what we need. And the whole community will be a very different community. That's what Christmas is for me. And that's the challenge of Christmas. And I beg you tomorrow, today, tonight, let's start shifting our gaze from what I need. Let's start asking the other question. What is God asking me? And what does my neighbor need? And if we ask those two questions, we could only be right. And we can only build a better family, a better community, and a better nation. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith in God. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before our God knowing that God hears the cries of his people's heart. And on this holy night, let us implore the God of perfect peace to fill us with the glory of the word made flesh. You have, you have given us Christ to be our light. In the name of the Prince of Peace, 
Help us to be a people ever eager to do what is right and just. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. You have given us Christ, the living word. In the name of the wonder counselor, pour out the spirit of wisdom and understanding on all religious leaders, especially our Pope Francis. We also pray for Archbishop Jason and all other clergy and religious. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. You have given us Christ to be the herald of good news to the poor and lowly. In the name of the Anointed One, help the church as it carries on Christ's mission of mercy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. You have given us Christ to redeem humanity from the forces of evil. In the name of Emmanuel, teach us to set aside any jealousy and animosity that deprives us of intimacy with you. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. You have given us the descendant of David to be our blessed hope. In the name of the risen Savior, comfort all who mourn with your tender compassion. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. You have given us a vision of your glory in the birth of Christ. In the name of Jesus, the child of Mary, bring all the deceased to the reign of eternal light and life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of glory, the light of Christ reveals a love for us. Receive our prayer and grant that we may always receive your word made flesh. With grateful hearts, we ask this through Christ our Lord. And we say this in our prayer. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name with you alone to guide us. Make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way that we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you your unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and the way of right. We ask this, you who work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and of the Son, forever and ever. Please be seated. Or of a tree hymn number 67 in your hymn book 67 O come all ye faithful
pray that your sacrifice and mine may be pleasing and acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we look forward, O oh Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly, for knowing that in them you make manifest the beginning of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of your, our mind, so that we may recognize in him God made visible. We may be caught up through him in a love of things invisible. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of your son our lord and savior jesus christ at the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks he broke it he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. <coughs> Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the bishops of the AC region, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, Lord. Look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Let all mortal flesh be silent and with fear and trembling stand on the nothing earthly minded, blessing is
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may draw new vigor from the celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen? Amen. Please be seated for a moment. Turn to the person next to you and just say, Happy Christmas. Come on. Just wish, wish each other Happy Christmas. And I wish you Happy Christmas. That this Christmas may be a special one, a really graceful one, a joyful Christmas where we will learn again how to smile and to be with each other in joy and peace. This Christmas, you know, Christmas is a time of giving gifts. You know that. So this Christmas, we give you a gift, a gift of a book. So if we can, if we can start, if we can start, thank you. So we'd, we'll give one book to each family and uh, just share the joy. Matthew Kelly is a lay Catholic who has written some really incredible books. This one is so different from anything else he's written. In this book, his title is Life is Messy. How do you like that title? No, no, not the football star. Not that one. Life is messy. And he gives a story of the messiness of his own life. And uh, just go down. So if you just, as they're coming down, just, right. He gives a story of the messiness of his own life. And he gives personal testimony to the challenges that he has faced. And I think coming out of COVID, where so many different people have had real challenges in their life, this is a wonderful read. Because here you see a man of faith willing to be vulnerable and willing to expose the messiness of his life, not hide it, and not, and not try to do away with it. So don't make it collect dust on the shelf, okay? All right? Read it, pass it along. And let's discuss it a little bit, because I think with what we have lived through in the last 21 months, this, this is a wonderful way of, of recalibrating and recognizing, yes, life, life is not easy sometimes, but God is always in the midst of the mess. Amen? Amen? Great. Is there anyone who has not got a book? Just stand up where you are or raise your hand so we know. I think we got every, or down this side, in the middle, in the middle right there. Okay. Just stand up, right, and on this side here also. If we could bring some books to the front, on this side. We don't want you to go, go, go home without receiving. All right, she's, she will find you. Come. No. Let us stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go glorifying the Lord with our life. Thanks be to God. Happy Christmas, everyone. Same to you, Father. Our recessional hymn, Shante Noel, number 63, in your, in your hymn books.
Shanti Noel, Shanti 